algebra. Now, I asked you to do me a big favor um, when we first started this topic, uh, which we haven't really looked at yet because we've been sort of working with numbers and we learned some laws. The commutative law, the associative, the associative law, and then this morning the d d d d d distributive law. <laughs> Divisive. <laughs> Divisive. <laughs> okay, right. So we looked at all those. Now, all of those were principles for working with numbers and how we can, like, sometimes we can change the order, sometimes we can rewrite the numbers to make them easy to deal with. Okay? Now, all of those were trying to set the stage. For this guy, I want you to, if you've got that heading there, I want you to put an arrow to algebra, and I'm going to give you what my definition of algebra is, because it's um, it kind of has a bit of a reputation, and the name itself is it actually comes from Arabic, so it's just a transliteration into our language. Yep. Uh, it's a. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you about the backstory a little bit later. It will make sense further on. But algebra is all about mathematics. when you don't know the numbers. <laughs> now, write that down with me, and then I will try and explain what I mean. Okay, because that's all this means, it's all it means. We looked this morning at how if you have like three times five, and five times three. We saw, oh cool, they're the same thing. And you can work out what those are. We've been looking at fractions, you can do all kinds of things to work with them and get to an answer, right? But sometimes we want to solve problems where you don't know what the numbers actually are, but you still want to work <laughs> with them. Okay? For instance, I could tell you that I am uh, four times the age of my daughter, plus two years, and I'm also uh, six times the age of my son. Okay? Now I could tell you that. Thanks. I can tell you that, right? And you don't know, you don't know how old I am, and you don't know how old my children are either. But on that little piece of information, or two pieces of information, you can work out exactly how old I am, even though you don't know the numbers, right? Even when you don't know the numbers, you can still work with them. Wait, don't we need to know at least one number? Maybe you don't, right? That means you're 22. You're seven? Are you? 33. Seven. I said, firstly, if you think I have an answer, I'm not responding to it now. Are your kids in your one and two? If you think you have an answer, I'm not answering now. <laughs> firstly, 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 algebra is this superpower of taking everything we established already. Oh, you can add or multiply in any order you like. You can group symbols, etc., in um, in particular orders with addition, multiplication, <coughs> and then you can distribute multiplication, etc. All those ideas, you can still work with them even when you don't know what the numbers are, because they're still numbers, so they still follow the same rules. There's the first idea. So algebra, you don't know the numbers. Secondly, and okay, algebra also gives us the tools, and I'll write this down in a second. It gives us the tools to describe patterns. It's the, it's the language to describe patterns. With any number. So I'm going to give you an example. Okay. I know there are lots and lots of patterns that we can take advantage of. For instance, if I give you a list of numbers, right, I could say, mm, let's see here, um, 2 times 0 equals, well, what's 2 times zero. 0? It's just 0. Okay, cool. How about another number? How about 5 times 0? What's that equal zero. to? It's still 0. How about, mm, bear with me, how about negative 3 times 0? What's that going to be? Yeah. 0. Okay, you're starting to get bored of me now, right? <laughs> because what I have established here is clearly a pattern. You can take any number you like and multiply by zero, yeah, right. and you'll still get zero. So like, how can I describe this? How can I succinctly say zero times any number, or any number times zero, will still equal zero? So here's a way, here's one way I could write it. I could say, for example, I could say, um, a times zero equals zero for <coughs> any number. 
A. So what have I done here, right? Two, five, negative three, they're numbers, but this guy is like a temporary label, right? It's sort of standing in for an actual number. And you can choose any number you like to be A. A is just kind of like what I'm calling that number at the moment. So I like this word of, it's kind of like a label. Yes? You could just have A times zero equals yeah, well, something so, you've noticed is, well, sorry, wait, isn't that what I wrote? Uh, yeah, you could just have that without for any number. Yeah, well, that's true, but you see, when I write this, it's kind of like, well, I've, I've introduced this thing, and we usually use letters, like A, for making words and stuff, right? So I'm kind of repurposing this label, because I'm like, I need some other label. I don't want to use one of my number labels, so I'm going to use my, one of my alphabetical labels. I'm just going to kind of borrow it. Okay. Yeah. Articles like terms. Ah, now there's lots and lots of language and terminology that we will get to. Um, like terms is an important one. Uh, we'll get to it a bit later. Remember, I've been calling it over and over again. I've been calling it a label so far. Okay, it's like a label for this other number. Okay, so a more technical name for this, which I'm going to introduce. Does anyone know it starts with a P? A more technical name for this label? Yeah, the kill. Pronumerals. A uh, pronumeral. Okay, so pronumeral. This is a pronumeral. Pronumeral literally means, it's not a numeral, A is not a numeral, it's a letter, but it's standing in for a numeral. It's just kind of like temporarily saying, hey guys, I act just like a number, I can be actually any number you like, and it'll still be true. You take any number, one by zero, you'll still get zero, okay? Um, you'll see this language of pronumerals, you'll also see another word, which starts with V, called a variable. Okay, now, I'm not going to tell you this time, I'm going to ask you, why do you think it's called a variable for? Why could we use this name? Yeah, Kimmy. Because it varies. Yeah, I, vary just means change, doesn't it? Right? And so here, A, I can change it to be 2, or I can change it to 5, or change it to negative 3, and it's still true, it still makes sense. Okay? So this idea here of being able to describe patterns that are true for any number, or to be able to talk about numbers when you don't know what the numbers are, that's all algebra is. It's not scary. It's actually a really simple idea. We do it all the time. I can say to you, okay, I know that there are, um, at the moment, there are 56 eyes in this room. 56 eyes. Where did I get that number 56 from? Yeah, Charlie. Um, I counted the people in the class, and then you times that by that number. Yeah, very good. So I said, and you might actually, I'd love you to write this with me, right? I said eyes equals uh, two times the number of people, right? So I can actually, because as you've seen, mathematicians, famously lazy, right? So we're like, oh, this takes so long to write. Why not abbreviate this with some labels, with some pronumerals, right? I could say E equals two times P. I should have a times sign in there. Okay, I'll talk about the abbreviations in a second. Yeah. Wait, don't you not have to write the times in your Yeah, I'll talk, I will talk about that in a second. But I just want to establish the language here, right? So again here, these two things are numbers which I don't necessarily know. I happened to count all of you as you came in, and then I added <coughs> me, okay? So that's how I knew how many people were in the room. But you know what? This, this is a pattern that's true for any number, if I, assuming everyone's got two eyes, okay? I can go into the next classroom. <laughs> And if there are, well, yeah, well, people lose their eyes and that kind of thing. But if I go into a classroom and I'm like, there are 31 people here. 31 people. Then you don't have to go secondarily and say, okay, one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to count all of those. There's a pattern here I can take advantage of. And you can just say 62 eyes. Does that make sense? 